We say I am an earth healer. I have to to heal the earth, but you can't heal the earth without water. In early 2016, President Mugabe declared a state of disaster in Zimbabwe following a severe El Nino-induced drought, which left nearly a quarter of the population food insecure. We are experiencing late starts to the rain, to, to the rain season. We are experiencing uh, longer mid-season dry spells, which sometimes most often results in crop failure. Um, and this causes a lot of confusion on the farmers because then they don't know what to do this season or how to adapt to the changes. In response to these serious challenges, USAID Food for Peace funded programs have prioritized building smallholder farmer resilience to shocks and stresses. The whole resilience piece for us in agriculture is climate smart agriculture. It's trapping more of the water that comes onto the land, allowing it to infiltrate, using it, and keeping more of the soil on the land. To support these activities, the TOPS program held a capacity strengthening event where we introduced the resilience design and smallholder farming systems approach to USAID Food for Peace funded project staff and their farmers and other organizations and ministry staff. Resilience design focuses on improving soil and water health through better pattern and land understanding and through building farmer capacity to design more resilient farm sites. And resilience is about enabling farmers in their farming systems to be able to respond to shocks, big shocks like floods and also stresses within the season. So just kind of general stresses around drought and climate. And the resilience design training is about trying to elevate the level where they are so that when the shocks and stresses are hitting, they're not falling down as low as they were before and they're able to come back to that level and maybe even a little bit higher. We're um, trying to enable people to look at what's uh, unique to a piece of land, a context, a community, by recognizing what are the patterns of the flows across the site, be it water, people, wildlife, sun, wind, and also what are the unique resources on that site. But we started to see uh, these technical field staff partnered with farmers looking at not just individual patterns in the landscape, but global plat patterns on the landscape like wind, sun, uh, frequency of rain, greater climate understanding, slope, all of these things and how they affect their productivity of their sites, but also the productivity and the resiliency of the communities. A lot of our uh, aha moments this week was the connectivity they made between understanding the patterns of that landscape, the problems and how they could shift them into being solutions through good design, good resilient design. We've learned that uh, soil and water are important resources and I think the farmers always have that in mind. But what we are learning now is um, how to make uh, better use of sun, of the wind, uh, of the interactions, uh, the influences uh, of nature uh, within the system. Uh, essentially, there's so much farmers can do. And uh, going forward, we want to use this learning uh, to better design uh, our systems so that they are more responsive to the shocks uh, that the communities that we work with uh, actually encounter on the ground. A lot of people are passionate about this and they're wanting to share these lessons out. So it's not just in one program or just down the street from where you are, but across the world that people are trying to make improvements in resilience design. It's just been mind-boggling to see how much opportunity there is to do small changes that could have a big impact. <laughs> Sara, Pam 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 S